All right, so it's the night after removing this wiring harness and uh, off camera, as you can tell, I've done some uh, stripping of it. I've taken all the split loom off and uh, some of the discoveries that I've uh, made at this at this stage is, uh, oh, it's just some of the things that people actually do. Uh, when it comes to wiring repair just really blows my mind that that anyway some of the ones that I uh, I found I want to show you just by pulling the split loom off sorry about the lighting uh, let's see here I can just get it to focus <coughs> Sorry, playing with my camera here. Uh, let's see if I can if I can get this to focus here. Where did I see that at? <coughs> what? Uh, <coughs> I said sorry about the shitty camera work, guys. I only do this on my cell phone because I ain't got a good enough camera at this point, but. Look at the condition of that splice. That was actually wrapped in some form of duct tape and then put in the split loom. It wasn't even wrapped with <coughs> wire tape. You know, like the vinyl wire tape. It wasn't even wrapped in that. It was wrapped in black duct tape. Black duct tape. Okay. That was that one. And then I got stuff like this. This also. This is a male-female spade connector. All right, on either end of this wire was also wrapped in duct tape and when I pulled this all both sides out of the split loom there was a lot of mud and other such stuff in there and this stuff is rusty both that splice I showed you just uh, downstream of of this guy <coughs> both are rusted both were wrapped in that black duct tape all right it was actually wrapped in this right here And I don't even know what's what's under this. Look at this. I mean, kudos to whoever decided to solder this, to be quite honest with you. If I can get it to focus, this is the first time I've ever seen this one. But from what I can see in the camera, it looks okay. I'm sure it could have been done better. But this should be wrapped in shrink tube. Heat shrink. This is what this stuff should be wrapped in. If you're gonna do a, a repair like that, this rusted out spade connector right here, all right, it should be wrapped in shrink tube. And as a matter of fact, this even shouldn't even be on here. This should be soldered together and wrapped in shrink tube. And then look at this pile of garbage right here. Look at all these different uh, crimp on butt connectors. I mean, these were at least wrapped in wire tape, but God, look at this. And this was sitting under the truck. This is what was powering my rear lights. Same thing with that one. Got all this garbage up here. And then this, this popped out of this connector, right up here at the connector. So I have to find a way to deep in this and try to salvage it but I'm not going to I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do on the inside so I bought some stuff for my work and uh, I'm actually gonna redo a good portion of this even the license plate lead uh, for the license plate light is tied into these butt connectors right here and it's just I mean there's two wires one wire coming in two wires going out I mean that looks like shit and it funk and, and, and that's no I mean, the, using these types of butt connectors on the outside of the vehicle. Look at this. I mean, it's even 
some, a lot of these, they're not even heat shrink. They're open. And moisture and all sorts of stuff can get in there and cause all sorts of problems. Especially on the back of the truck. That's where their back tires are. You're going to get a lot of moisture up in, up in that. I mean, considering when I pulled the split loom off of both these leads here, this one's going to my passenger side. Right here is the first one I just showed you guys. Sorry, my phone's just not focusing right. But I do have, let's see, see, look at that. Got another one of those spade connectors. Come on, focus. Got another one of those spade connectors. <coughs> see if I can get it to focus. <coughs> so yeah, another one of those spade connectors. Right, there, there we go. There we go. All right, and look at that. That is rusted. That is corroded. That has got the green fuzzies going on on either end of that. All right, and to be honest, I just noticed this in the camera, but that almost looks like a factory connection. You look, if I can just keep my phone focused. But yeah, that almost looks like a factory connector. On both of those because I noticed both leads have it now I'm not quite exactly sure why that is to be honest with you but the rest of these things the light sockets my backup lights tail light brake light turn signal and my side marker lights <coughs> both the left and the right look good now according to my wiring diagram I have on my phone for the back of this this is supposed to this cluster of grounds right here it's supposed to have a fourth lead coming off to coming off of it and it's supposed to ground to the sheet metal of the bed all right and i can actually show you that one this is the left side so this is the driver's side what i just showed you was the passenger and as you can tell you look real closely there are four leads all right three ground leads for each individual socket and then this lead right here that grounds to the sheet metal just behind the light fixture all right and then what appears to be a single ground wire all right and i'm sure that ground wire probably loops all the way around which you got some grounds right here loops all the way around to my right side and then uh, this one's obviously, this. you look real close, that doesn't look like a factory splice. All right, so whoever spliced this did did a good, uh, you know, the right idea by uh, soldering it. Soldering job could have been done better, but eliminating the sheet metal ground on that side I think was bad because my uh, diagram does show that it is supposed to have a uh, ground on both sides behind the light fixtures. All right. So there is a little bit of work here that needs to be done. Those uh, spade connectors, though they look factory, they really do. They do really do look look like uh, factory spades, like General Motors put them there. <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> trying to get off the ground here. Help! I'm falling and I can't get up. All right, you look. That doesn't look like a DIY type crimp job. It, it, it does not. That is a factory. That that's a professional crimp job. All right. And it's like that on the other side. So somehow General Motors thought that this was supposed to be serviceable or something. I don't know what this is supposed to do. Whether you're this is an access point to be able to tie in some accessories, uh, additional lighting, I don't know. But none of my diagrams show a splice right here. They don't show this being able to be disconnected right here on either side on the assembly. And it's on one of the, it's on the dark green wire. And when I look at the diagram, the dark green wire does not show a splice on either side. So I don't know exactly what what's going on here so but at this stage i don't see any reason that these need to be here they are extremely corroded they do have 
the green fuzzies and the rust and stuff going on. Sorry, my phone just will not focus. And uh, so I'm going to cut these out and I'm going to split and I'm going to solder these together and uh, shrink tube them. Uh, these things right here, these are just some sort of wire holder that just slips onto the sheet metal, the hole that the wires go through just behind the. Uh, the uh, light fixture or the the light assembly in the bed so um, and that's basically this on both sides those are really the only repairs I am gonna add the sheet metal ground when I redo the grounds the ground splice on these when I because even though this does look good I am gonna do redo this and I'm gonna do it right and I'm gonna I'm going to do a little bit better job of soldering this and then I'm going to add that fourth lead to add a additional ground on this side. As uh, The initial problem I was having was the brake lights and the turn signals on my passenger side were not working. They haven't been working for a long time. I haven't been pulled over for it, but I figured it's a problem I might as well address right now and get it taken care of before I do get pulled over and get warned on that. Uh, I quite frankly just don't want to deal with that. <coughs> so that was the initial problem I was having was these, this right side was not working. And it did work when I had the truck and I'd never tore into it other than to change light bulbs and that was it. And then shortly after I changed the light bulbs, the side wasn't working. Now I tested the light bulbs, the light bulbs are good because I'd take the light bulbs out of this side, put them in the left side and they worked. And I'd take the left side bulbs, put them in the right side, they didn't work. So I know the problem is in the wiring in this side. It's not the light bulb. So before anybody in the comment section says to check my light bulbs, I did. All right, I even put uh, regular, I got silver stars in it. I put regular incandescence in it. And again, the brake light and turn signal circuits were not working on that side, but I was getting, I am getting my reverse lights, my side marker light and my, and my parking lights. Uh, I am getting those on both sides. And a couple nights ago, I had actually swapped my dad vehicles so I can go down to Salt Lake City and do some training for work. And, you know, my truck is just not going to make it down there. And especially not having brake lights at all. When I uh, pulled in behind him, as he was pulling into our meeting place to swap vehicles, I noticed that my brake lights on either side were not working. Now, my, uh, my uh, driving lights were working. But my turn signals, I mean, it was a problem on both sides. Where my uh, driving lights worked, my license plate light worked, my side marker lights worked, my reverse lights worked, but uh, I didn't have any brake lights or turn signals on either side of the truck in the back. So everything was working up front. So uh, with that being said, I decided not to drive the truck. I did a little poking around to find out that uh, my Atta fuse, which I have detailed in a, another video, I'm going to go through the procedure and or the process of what I did to get to where I'm at here in this video. And uh, I uh, put took my Atta fuse out for my cigarette lighter, put my 15 amp fuse back in, and everything worked back to the way it was where everything worked on the left side, turn signals, brake lights, all that stuff worked on the left side, and there's not a damn thing wrong with the left side, but the right side, <coughs> two of the four circuits were not working. So, and one and another in that same video, I am also go I go in under the truck and I do test to see if I am getting power back there, and I do. So I know the problem is in this harness because I've tested everything up to this point, utilizing a, both a multimeter to check voltage, the exact voltage at that at the rear socket that that side plugs into under the bed. All right, and uh, whatnot. So. And that's, again, I'll get that video out here shortly. Because <coughs> um, this one's more than likely going to be really, be uploaded right after I uh, get done filming this directly off my phone. But the other thing, you look at this, uh, this forward harness here. This connector right here, female, all right, female, for lead, I work at a parts store, all right? 
we do not have these. All right. I even checked all the competition stores around. All right. And what I was able, I was able to find this for right around seventy dollars. This plastic piece with this seal with four leads coming out of it with about a foot of wire, 12 inches of wire, they want 70 goddamn dollars. That is fucking ridiculous. All right, that is that is just absolutely redunculous for a piece of blow molded plastic, a couple chunks of rubber and four feet of wire i want 70 dollars for that that no i'm actually gonna go a different route in fixing this yes guys in the comment section like i said can yell at me all you want and i can simply probably just depin this and salvage the pin or go to a salvage yard like a lot of people say but here's the thing about salvage yard my truck's 32 years old it's one of the last remaining years of that body style all right and if I really wanted to push the subject further, I could see if the GMT 400 from 80, 88 to 94 ish, all right, utilize the same socket and their taillight assembly. But be honest with you, bought a style change? Probably not. All right. So, more than likely, again, and even if they did, all those vehicles that are sitting back there more than likely have the factory original plug that's been under the truck for at or oh at almost or at or over 30 years which means it is probably going to be in this condition if not worse all right and quite frankly i don't want to have to deal with constantly having to cut and splice and change these damn plugs out i'd rather replace it with the brand new one all right one of the other things i noticed that whoever did this wiring job i mean look at that you got small gauge wire going into larger gauge wire going back to small gauge wire all with what I call unprotected butt splices yes this was wrapped in wire tape but I guarantee you take a good look in there you know obviously we're not going to be able to see all that well I us to get a good look in there, and I bet you these have got some crusties on them. And this has got the green, the uh, green fuzzies growing, as Erico at South Main Auto says. All right, this is just, this is just, I'm gonna say it, fucking ridiculous. This is, this is the prime example of why people's vehicles burn down on the side of the road, uh, especially the older ones. This is a prime example of why they're constantly happen to fix stuff because they do shitty repairs like this. All right. They do shitty repairs like this. According to my diagram, this plug right here is supposed to go to one, one of these two leads. All right. And then I'm supposed to have another identical plug like this that goes to the other lead, to the other side of the truck. All right. But looking at my truck this plugs right into the harness coming from the front of the truck so i'm thinking i got a slightly different wiring setup and somebody just completely fuckered this up i mean two wires going into one i mean and it obviously worked because when i bought the truck all the lights in the back worked so obviously something here worked and this green wire right here that's supposed to be in that hole with no wire in it is probably and i guarantee you, is probably the cause of why my passenger side the two circuits on my passenger side were not working all right so with that being said uh that's probably the cause of it i'm going to go through and redo all of this and now i'm going to go in and show you exactly what i'm going to do real quick all right so what was a second to you was just a minute or so for me but in this box is some stuff that i bought obviously to re-secure the wiring harness to the truck i.e to the frame and other things bought a nice big bag of cable ties all right 
Uh, I'm not going to tell you what my my price is on these, but these go for right around eleven dollars for this exact bag, and that, again, that's pricing in my area, but probably give or take a few bucks, but right around eleven dollars for this bag. All right. The next thing I got was a new thing, a split loom here. It's the smaller 3.8 size, because I'm pretty sure that that's what I got. All right, uh, it's got 10 feet, which is more than enough to split loom that, okay? Uh, this actually ran for right, runs for right around five to six bucks. All right, now, whoever did the repairs on this did their, got the right idea and put it in split loom, which is good, but they didn't wrap the split loom all the way to prevent dirt and other garbage and debris from getting inside and when I pulled pulled it pulled it off there was a lot of dirt and debris that came out of that and that is a big issue that can cause issues with the wiring so you want to be able to seal this off and that's where you just if you have to wrap a layer or two of wire tape around it all right because I noticed that's what the factory does is the factory will wrap a couple layers of tape over this split loom all right because I will be doing more uh, wiring harness restoration videos uh, actually coming here soon because I did actually pull a nice big chunk of wiring harness out of the Ford in my storage shed and we're actually going to be restoring that too and I'm going to take bring you guys along for the ride <coughs> so the next thing I also got was a set of these alligator clip le test leads that I can use to hook up power and ground to ensure that once I'm done with all this, everything actually works. All right, I can actually do that. All right, and that's what I'm gonna do with this, with these. I did get some butt connectors. Now, yeah, even though I just bashed on these butt connectors, but if you look at these ones, they say weatherproof. And when you look at the back, it will say heat shrinkable insulation provides weatherproof seal which means the ends of these if you notice how flared out they are those are heat shrink so after you crimp them you can shrink these down and it basically is like soldering and heat shrink in a sense these are for when i go through and do the modification on the wiring harness that's under the truck that goes to the front all right because quite frankly i do not want to sit under my truck and solder and shrink tube what I'm about to do so this is what I'm going to use but these are the proper con butt connectors for the job because these can be heat shrink down to create a seal that prevents the center here from getting corroded I didn't say it stops it will help prevent it another thing is is because I'm adding the grounds is I got heat shrinkable weatherproof ring terminals all right both these packages go for right around five to six bucks okay and again same thing heat shrinkable insulation provides weatherproof seal okay right there and this is what you want any any type of wiring you're gonna do on the outside or under your vehicle if it's gonna be a part of your vehicle that is gonna be exposed to the elements all the time which means under, outside, or in the engine compartment, you want to use weatherproof terminals, weatherproof butt connectors, anything weatherproof that's got this heat shrinkable material on it. All right, I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube from a lot of people that are far more experienced, and what I mean by experienced means they've been doing this stuff a lot longer, have even recommended these. I've even talked to a lot of automotive electricians that have said the same thing that recommend these so I highly recommend you don't cheap out and get these alright the next thing I'm, I'm gonna say if you're gonna do any sort of wiring work alright whether you're building your own harness or whether you're restoring a harness like this get some contact cleaner this stuff especially if you're gonna reuse some contacts this will come in handy okay I'm gonna use this to clean all those sockets out <coughs> All right, and a little bit of emery cloth. I do believe I have a roll of that over there. Emery cloth, so small wire brushes, things like that. And this contact cleaner, all right, to help 
clean your contacts out if you're going to reuse them to help corrode a better seal. Plus this contact cleaner, I do believe also, if you look, helps prevent contact failure. Doesn't, I mean, I've seen a lot of people use this before. It comes highly recommended. I've never used it. So I'm going to give this stuff a shot and see if I can help keep these alive long enough so I don't have to replace them because that's the more soldering and splicing I really don't want to have to do. I want to try to keep this as original as I possibly can. So yes, invest in a can of this. Last but not least, what I'm going to do is when I told you that that plug right there, all right, is going to be replaced, well, I'm going to replace it with this. Yes, this is a uh, this is a trailer extension. All right, yes, and you see vehicle side, trailer side, okay. This is designed to extend your trailer wiring for your for whatever trailer if you have a four pin flat connector. Now, all right, I'm gonna pause you for a second. I'm gonna open this package up. I'm gonna show you what my plan is. All right, so you look at this. You see closely you have a male end and you have a female end. I've already tested this, but and trying to do this with one hand impossible, but as you as you can look, that will plug into each other. Alright, if it'll focus, but those will plug into each other. So when I plug those in, I can cut these four wires down the middle and oh hey, guess what? Look what we got. We got all the wiring minus the black. The grounds will take care of themselves. But hey, we got dark green, we got yellow, we got and this is exactly the same wiring that's coming off the truck. That's coming out of the, on the wiring harness that's still sitting under the bed coming from the front of the truck. Dark green, yellow, brown, and white. Alright. And if you look real closely, they're all labeled. These wires are all labeled. See? Even though the white states it's ground, alright. Well, the grounds for this particular circuit I'm going to be splicing this into are already taken care of. So, this white ultimately becomes my reverse lights. Okay? And then the brown, for whatever it is, it, it, it says, it's because my phone's not focusing. Tail lights, turn signals, and then you got left turn, right turn, alright? Either which way... I can figure out, obviously, we're using a diagram and stuff, figure out which side goes where. All right, because you look at this connector. Four pin, four wires. Well, three wires, but here's where the fourth is. That's supposed to go in that hole. All right. Four pins, four wires. It should work. Hence I said should. I know it's going to work because I'm going to make it work. So I'm going to take and cut, put these together, cut this down the middle, which should give me a good two to three inches on either side of lead. <coughs> I'm going to take one side and I'm going to split and kind of cut that garbage off. Probably going to cut it down about right, right here. All right, I am. I might cut it a little lower. I'm not sure. I want to take care of all these splices because that's all those splices is just more potential for resistance, more potential for corroding, and I want to eliminate a lot of that. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to cut the other half of that connector that's on the truck off, and I'm going to splice these in, and then what I'm going to do is once these are connected in, I'm going to wrap some wire tape around here to prevent this from popping out for any reason. And hopefully give it a better seal. All right, so that, that's what I'm gonna do. That's my diabolical scheme, as you could say, or my repair plan. Just like doctors when they have a surgical plan or a treatment plan, this is my surgical and treatment plan to fix this truck. All right, to get my rear lights working and to ensure that I can get years of abuse out of this 
roughly 30 some odd year old harness that I'm going to go through and actually fix. And I'm going to bring you guys along and I'm going to show you guys how to do this properly. Now when the Ford's, when I get ready to do the Ford's harness, all right, which is actually sitting out in the cab of my truck right now. So it's sitting in there for a couple weeks. Uh, I've got some stuff coming that I ordered on the internet uh, that I'm going to do with some unveiling and stuff that's going to correspond with this stuff that I just bought. All right. And the only reason why I bought this stuff is because I need my truck. It's my primary means of transportation and I need to get it fixed. Again, another time crunch, but I'm bringing you guys along with me because I'm sick and tired of doing repairs and not bringing you guys along. Because how, why, if I'm doing the repairs, I'm not giving you guys content. So, yeah, stick around. But that's it. I'm going to go through and show you guys how to, uh, and, and the next, the Ford's one, I'm going to do step by step. I know I, you know, I'm going to do it step by step. I'm going to take off all the loom and we're going to go through and inspect it. And as I'm taking it apart, it's going to be the first time I've seen it. I'm not going to be doing anything off camera with it at that stage. You guys are coming along for the ride with that one. With this one, I am under a time crunch, like I've said in my update videos. But this time, I'm not in that big of a time crunch, so I'm going to be able to uh, bring you guys along with me. So uh, stay tuned. I'll have the uh, videos prior to this one. Uh, hopefully, a little bit of minor editing and uh, put them up as soon as I can. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't.